typically when you're building something like a data frame in pandas you're not keying that data directly into your source code and building your frame from that you're getting that data you're getting that information from some third-party external source it might be a database it might be something like JSON or XML or very likely it will be a CSV file a comma separated value file CSV files are very popular and that's because they are easy to read and pretty universally portable among different computer systems. You've likely seen one before. It looks something like this. It's a plain old text file with a bunch of values that are separated onto different rows and the columns are simply split by, that's right, commas because they're comma separated values. Pretty straightforward. Pandas makes it easy to read this common file format in with the dot read CSV function. It looks something like this. If we consider this CSV file that I have up right here, I simply pass it into my dot CSV function, which returns for me a data frame. When we look at the output, very straightforward. I have a data frame. Notice that it gave 0, 1 the index, the row indexes it built by itself. And then here are my five columns separated by those commas. Now you'll notice one kind of goofy thing that happened here. This very first row doesn't have an index and it looks a little bit different. And that's because read CSV assumed that the first row was actually my column headers, the names of my columns. You can fix that in a couple of different ways. Primarily, you will fix it with header equals none. This is telling the read CSV function that there is no header row. And so it should assume that first row is actually index zero. And that's what it's done right here when I passed in the header equal none into the, the read underscore CSV function. Now it has given me auto-generated indexes and column headers, zero through four for both of those rows and columns. And that is the default behavior to understand about read CSV. If you take away nothing else, take away this, that read CSV will automatically index your rows, but it will infer column headers. That is the default behavior unless you override that. And some helpful or useful ways that you can override that, well, first of all, you can insert column headers into your CSV file. This is probably the most sensical way to do it. You're going to say, you know what? These columns should be labeled alpha, beta, gamma, delta, and epsilon. Now those row headers are there, so I can leave the header equals none off of my code, go back to the original code, and you see that it pulls in those headers for me. It pulls in those text values to be my column headers instead of giving me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can do the same thing with a column to get my index rows. For example, if I have data that looks like this. Here I've added one additional column, so now it's six columns wide. I've given it a header of date, and you can see that I have date values there, January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd. When we import this data, we pass in the index underscore call equals zero. This says use the first row, the zeroth column, as my index column. And when I print out this data frame, we can see that now we have a column of indices based on that date value and notice it formatted them the, exactly the way they came in. So it doesn't recognize them as any kind of date value, it just recognizes them as strings. And it got my headers up here just like this. So now I have a nice cleanly formatted data frame. By using an index column and keying the header values into the CSV file, I overrode the default behavior of read underscore CSV. Now one last thing I want to go over real quick is how you deal with data that's not quite formatted the way you hope. Obviously it's nice when you get your data with these nice headers and an index column and everything, but if you've worked with data, you know that's not usually how you get your data. Usually when you get your data, it looks something more like this, just a list of individual values. And the person who has sent you the data or hooked you up with this data is like, oh, you know what, that's just broken down like this. These are what these numbers mean. You can deal with it from there. You need to manipulate it from there. And you might be a little bit panicked if you get data like this, but again, Pandas makes it very easy to shape and manipulate your data to represent what you want. After all, you just read in this list of values into a data frame, and you get a single column of data, data values that don't represent anything intelligent for you. So here's a short little piece of code that will deal with this a little bit better. For instance, I create two indexes. One is going to be my row index, and I happen to know that this is a 2,000 row column or a 2,000 row CSV file because I created it. So I know that there are 400 periods. I'm going to make a date range of 400 periods split across five columns. Right? 5 times 400 equals 2,000. Then I'm going to read that into a data frame, and I'm going to indicate header equals none because I don't have any header value on my data frame file. I'm going to get the values of the data frame and reshape them in a 400 by 5 data or a 2D NumPy array. The result of reshape is a NumPy array. So now Vales is a two-dimensional NumPy array, which I use inside of this data frame function along with my two indexes 
that I created in order to create my new data frame. And when I print out my new data frame, you can see with this simple five or six rows of, of code, I now have a nice data frame listed out just like this with my column headers and my index rows based on dates down the left hand side. So I reshaped my data assuming the data was in this format to begin with or was in this order to begin with very easily into something recognizable and understandable and I didn't have to use like any database import export SQL functions to do this. I was able to do it all with the built in functions of pandas. So that covers how you work with .csv files with pandas. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.